Hello and welcome to the channel. I thought I'd start a series on this channel about beginning wildlife photography because I occasionally get questions about this when I'm out with my camera and I thought I could create a little series that would help a lot of people. So the series is going to be talking about how to get close to wildlife, how to take the pictures composition, those kind of things, how to track wildlife and a little bit about what camera gear. I'm, I'm not interested in talking about Canon versus Nikon versus Sony. This is going to be more sort of general advice because these days it doesn't really matter which system you buy into. You just need some equipment to go and have a lot of fun. So I'm hoping this series will help a lot of people and if you have comments or questions please leave them in the comments below and I will try and answer them either directly or in a future video. The thing that I consider the most important with wildlife photography is getting up close to the animals. If you consider this image of a squirrel for example, here I am way too far away and even if we crop in the image is still rubbish. So in order to get this image I would need to have been much much closer to the squirrel. But getting up close requires a lot of practice. Professional wildlife photographers they get to practice all the time because it's their job. We as amateur photographers or beginning photographers we don't have those opportunities so we need to find something local and that's what I do frequently. I go around in my local neighborhood and I practice on subjects, getting up close to them, seeing how close I can get without disturbing the animals and then withdrawing as well without disturbing the animal. That's really important because it's one thing to get up close, getting the pictures that you want and then just getting off and leaving and then scaring everything. That's not ethical. We want to be ethical in our approach to animals so that we don't disturb them. We don't alter their behavior. That's really, really important. Doing this a lot allows you to get a solid foundation in how to approach wildlife, which you can then expand on. And that will allow you to get images like this oyster catcher, where I had to utilize all the skills that I do utilize when I am approaching the squirrels, plus a few more, in order to get close enough and get some excellent footage and this image of the oyster catcher. And similarly, with this image of the ring plover, I had to circumvent the area where it was in, in order not to scare it, and then I was crawling along the mud for hundreds of yards in order to get close enough but still allow the bird to show me whether or not it was comfortable with me being there and if I had noticed that it would have been uncomfortable I would have stopped and I would have withdrawn a bit and seen how the bird would then react but these are the kind of things that you learn as you go along but you need the solid foundation first and that is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be practicing on some squirrels that are hiding in the trees behind me and coming out on the ground. So I'm going to be showing you how I am approaching the area and how I'm staying relatively low and hidden and give you some few tips and tricks as we go along. First things first is at this stage really important that we take our camera gear out of the bag and that we perhaps leave the bag behind us because you don't want to get up to the location you see your subjects then you dump the backpack off scaring the animals then you start unzipping and pulling out cameras fixing lenses and all of that kind of stuff you want to be ready before you get to the area. So on approach here, it's really important to stay low. Luckily for me though, there is a row, a hedgerow going along here, 
and I can easily hide behind that as I go along and I already see a squirrel over there so I'm going to be moving towards it but staying hidden. It's important at this stage to maintain eye contact with the animal because you want to make sure the animal isn't scared of you. As soon as you notice a change in its behavior, like if a squirrel stands upright, then you need to stop. Don't just sort of flop down on the ground because that's just going to make noise and that's definitely going to scare your subject. Now fully in position. Sadly there were some people that came by that scared it up into the tree but I know it's in the tree and it's very likely to come down again and rummage around on the field. I can already see it so let's see if we can at least get some film of it. Okay, it's gone into the bushes over there now. At this stage, it's a matter of waiting. You're in position, you know your subject is in the area. You need to stay quite still and just observe and wait for the subject to return. Once the animal gets back, I'm doing this safely by the way because I know the squirrel isn't here so I can demonstrate whilst I'm waiting for it. Once the animal gets back it's really important that we don't react immediately, draw a huge breath <gasps> and then raise the camera really quickly to our eyes. It's important that we stay calm, measured, slowly raise the camera whilst making eye contact then we can start looking through the viewfinder and tracking our subject. And certainly don't go because <gasps> that's bound to uh, scare the animal. You'll notice I have changed positions here because the way the squirrel was moving this morning was away from the other location. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to get some better images and better footage of it from this position instead. Well, my morning is mostly over. There are starting to become too many jog walkers and people going to work and, and what have you that disturbs the 
animals, but I hope you found this very instructional. And I, of course, hope that you like the footage that I got and the images that I got as well, and that this inspires you to go out and try some of this on your own. So, once again, if you like this video um, and you want to see more of this comment, please comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see and what you'd like me to cover in this series. So, until next time, please like and subscribe to the video. Take care now. Bye-bye.